Hey everyone, we've had a lot of questions since we posted our vlog series from La Puy en Valais to Santiago de Compostela, especially since a lot of you noticed that I'm wearing a lumbar pack, not a backpack. I've had a lot of questions about what I actually brought, how did I fit everything into that little bag, so I'm going to show you. I'm going to break down my Camino packing list, everything I brought in my lumbar pack, how I fit an entire Camino's worth of stuff into a 7 to 10 liter bag, and how you can pack a little bit lighter for your next Camino. I'm Sean, and this is Days We Spend. This is the bag that I carried for 54 days from France to Santiago. I love this bag. This bag has now been on three Caminos, again, including the longest Camino I've ever done. This is the Sierra Designs Lumbar Pack 7 to 10 liter model. This lumbar pack has one buckle, one main compartment, one top compartment, and two little sort of side zipper stuff sack things. There's also two water bottle pockets on the side and I've kind of Frankenstein a little bungee cord strap system onto the top to help me because the exterior buckle strap system is okay, but I found that it wasn't enough storage for a lot of my grab and go items like a jacket. I found it to be an amazing experience. It might not be right for everyone. You really do have to cut your choices really to the bone with only the essentials and that starts with your clothing. One of the best parts of having a lumbar pack is that your back isn't gonna get disgustingly sweaty. This is the Columbia Silver Ridge Utility Men's Long Sleeve Shirt. I wore this hiking shirt 54 days in a row. I don't have a backup, I don't have an alternate, and I smell like a daisy. This shirt is excellent for hiking the Camino with a lumbar pack specifically because the vents are vertical. That allows the wind to go across your back. Huge fan of this shirt. I would usually have it rolled up like this with the snaps, but on the mornings or on really sunny days, you can bring it down. The collar is great. Lainey used to like joke about how she could just see my shirt billowing like a pirate because the wind was moving through it. It kept me cool, it kept me breezy. If you plaster a backpack to your back, the vents won't work. And it has a snap button sort of top two buttons, which pairs beautifully with my very good hat that everyone should make. You snap your thing into there, and then, oh, I don't wanna wear my hat right now. Oh, it's sunny again. Good job, shirt. You need a shirt that you can wear every day, all the time, any weather, Columbia Silver Ridge, worth every penny. When you're on trail, I highly recommend a hat they're really important for keeping the sun off your face. This hat was inspired by a fisherman that I met in Croatia named Roko. What's up, buddy? And he had this old weird hat that he just cut the hole out of to make it like a wraparound visor. So I just cut the top off this $3 hat. I ended up loving this hat. It's flexible. I like does the button thing that I showed you. Really happy with my hat, but wear whatever you can. Keep the sun off your face. With a sun hat, you need to protect your eyes. Ooh, these are the Valen brand Heron Mountain sunglasses. They've got this leather side area. I didn't think I was gonna like these, but they're amazing on the trail. The way that they block out sun on the sides and just the overall quality of the lenses. These things are amazing. I didn't even bring a case for them. I would just put them through my buff like this. They were always ready to go. I will say the peripheral vision is a little bit poor for cities. So if you're crossing a bunch of roads, Maybe you don't wear them. I am a shorts hiker. I don't wear hiking pants unless it's freezing. We hiked the Le Puy in August. We hiked the Camino Frances in September. So it was typically very warm. There was a week where it was incredibly warm. So I thought that shorts was the way to go and I was very happy with that choice. I picked up a pair of shorts from Decathlon. I think they were 15 euros. They've got a zipper kind of cargo pocket, two good front pockets more than enough space for everything I need to keep my valuables on me at all time, my wallet, my passport, etc. This is the Unbound Merino men's crew boxers. I don't know what, I never know what they're called. They're underwear. Really great, good odor resistance, good sweat resistance, really nice pair of underwear. The other thing I'm wearing are my darn tough Merino wool hiking socks. I have a crew length sock 
underneath that, I have the REI Silk Sock Liners. I very much recommend sock liners. Oh I only gosh. had one pair of sock liners. I would wear them, wash them, dry them, wear them. They're right at the end of their life cycle. If you really, really want to, you can bring a backup pair. That way you're not worried about them getting wet. You'll get blisters if you wear wet socks. I alternated my darn tough hiking socks with another pair that I got from Decathlon. Just a cheap sort of lightly padded pair of hiking socks, nothing crazy. I do recommend Darn Tough, so maybe grab two pairs. They are better. These are the Ultra Lone Peak 6. I wore this exact pair of shoes from Le Puy en Valais, 1500 kilometers to Santiago. The tread is actually still remarkably in shape. These are foam, so there's gonna be some compression over like a brand new pair. But I've also been wearing these for the past six months as my daily shoe here in Spain. They're just starting to show some wear and tear. When people ask how long does a pair of ultras last, the answer is forever. Officially, these shoes are only rated for about 500 miles, but I've done triple that in them. I'm gonna wear these things till they fall off like a dandelion flower while I'm hiking one day. Really big fan of the Ultras. They've got a nice wide toe box, very comfortable on the trail, just the right amount of padding. This is my second pair, and I've got a third pair on the way for the next big bout of Caminos that we're gonna do. Good job, Ultras. When I got to town, I would change into these super low profile sandals. You need a pair of sandals for the albergues. They're gonna make you leave your boots and your shoes out front. You need it for walking around. You also need it for the shower. They've got a little bit of a heel ridge here. They're the slip-in design, so you can wear socks with them if it's really cold. I got these particularly for the lumbar pack because they're super flat. They're very thin, so I can strap them to the outside of my bag. I also wore my buff every single day. It's just a nice way to stay warm in the morning. You can dip it in a fountain and give yourself a little like cool down if it's super hot and it keeps the sun off your neck. This is the lighter weight sort of summer buff. This is everything else that I would wear on the Camino. I can fit it in one hand. This is a jacket, pair of pants, an extra pair of underwear, that second pair of socks that I mentioned, and a long sleeve merino t-shirt. That's it. This is the secret to packing in a lumbar pack. You have to get your second set of clothing down to one thing. One change of underwear. These are the Uniqlo Arisms. They're like the smallest underwear I've ever seen. These are the Patagonia Terribone, Terribone, Terribone. I don't know how to say it. Terrybone joggers. These are the lightest pair of hiking pants that I could find. They weigh next to nothing. They've got a drawstring top, a zippered pocket in the back. So these were my albergue pants or like when you got to town, if you wanted to change out of shorts. My only complaint is the pockets weren't amazing. If I had my wallet and phone and passport on me, my pockets would fill up pretty quickly, but they're incredibly lightweight, very, very comfortable. I never wore these on trail. These were my city pants my shorts for my hiking clothes. This is the Unbound Merino men's long sleeve shirt. Very lightweight, it fits really nicely, incredibly comfortable. I'm a big fan of Merino. It is wrinkle resistant, odor resistant. It's just gonna take everything that the Camino can dish out and you're gonna be okay. I decided to bring one long sleeve shirt as like my layer and my city shirt. I think it might've been a mistake. I kind of wanted a regular t-shirt most days when I got to town, especially in the summer. Maybe you could bring both. You could bring a t-shirt and a light layer, like a light fleece. I didn't, but if you're someone who gets cold easily, I would recommend splitting them up. The only other thing that I brought is this rain shell. I picked this up here in Spain. This is Galicia style. If you live in Galicia, you know that it rains a lot, so they know what they're doing. This is just a really simple wind shell rain jacket. It's got some ventilation in here, decent zipper, but it's not seam sealed. In a downpour, it soaks through pretty quickly. So I would maybe upgrade to a better shell. This was my like jacket for cold evenings. This was my jacket for cold mornings. So I stuffed it in that bungee system that I rigged for my backpack so that it was always handy. The only other big change that you have to make if you wanna fit everything for the Camino in a lumbar pack is that you cannot bring a sleeping bag. You could, I guess, strap it to the outside. That's totally okay. But then you've got your sleeping bag on the outside you have to worry about rain, you have to worry about dirt. These things are engineered to be like pretty snug to your body. So if you have them kind of ballooning out or ballooning down, it's gonna change the way the belt kind of works and you're always gonna be feel like you're getting pulled backwards and it kind of ruins the experience. You really do need to keep the, the silhouette of the lumbar pack true to form. I know I broke that by putting a few things on top, but they were on top 
not on bottom, so the weight was still pressing down. I've opted instead for a sleep liner. I found this one here in Spain. It weighs 100 grams, which is like two Snickers bars. It gets super light. This is smaller than a t-shirt. It kept me warm. I sleep relatively warm. I don't mind using the albergue blankets. I didn't get any bed bugs. If that's not something you want to do, that's totally fine. You would maybe want to get a more robust sleep liner, or maybe the lumbar pack is not the right call for you. You absolutely need a sleep mask for the Camino. People turn the lights on, bring a sleep mask. This is from the flight to Spain. I just kept it. I also brought melatonin. I'm not a doctor. Ask your doctor if you should do this. I also recommend earplugs, the silicone earplugs or just the simple foam ones. They're amazing. I, however, don't use them. I use instead a pair of wireless earbuds. They really fit in there. I'm probably gonna start screaming now. They really fit in there nice and snug. I couldn't hear anything, including my own snoring. I'm sorry, guys. They are a little heavy. The case is a bit much, so I'd probably opt for a lighter pair, but they're like $30. Toiletries is another place where you're gonna have to make some cuts if you wanna fit comfortably in a lumbar pack. This can be very challenging for people, especially if they have certain requirements, if they need to bring certain medicines, or if there's things that they just feel uncomfortable without, that's totally okay. This is a $2 plastic travel kit that I got from the grocery store. I added this little carabiner. You can just hang it on the shower. In here, I've got, I think, a toothpaste, a bar of soap, and a toothbrush. That's all I brought. For me, this was enough. For you, it might not be. If you're someone that needs deodorant, please bring deodorant. The other part of my bathroom kit is this on believable towel. This is the Airlight towel from Sea to Summit. This was recommended from another pilgrim we met. Thank you so much, Sarah. Changed my whole life. This is the large. It's big enough to wrap around my waist, just barely. Comes in this little stuff sack. It's one of those quick dry, kind of microfibery towels. Very comfortable. It dries really quickly. Doesn't smell. When you're in a lumbar pack, weight is important, but also like volume. You need to get things that are very small volume. And while there are some really good other travel towels out there, they're pretty bulky in comparison. I very much recommend this for all Camino packers, but if you're gonna try to do a lumbar pack, this is essential. This is my first aid kit. This was a gift from Lainey. Thanks, Lainey. This is the Topo Designs taco bag. I don't know if it's 100% waterproof, but I never, it never got wet inside, so maybe it is. I would clip it to the outside of my bag, like this. There's this little toggle there. This was just right outside. I would even tuck it under this strap so that it wouldn't bobble around. It was still ready to go whenever I needed something. I've got Iodex in here for like rubbing down sore muscles at the end of the day. I also had a little pouch of ibuprofen. Again, not a doctor. I also kept a pair of clippers, nail clippers in here. Bring a pair of nail clippers, they're surprisingly useful. This is like, I don't know what it's called actually, it's like Band-Aid tape. I use it if I have a cut on my hand, it fits on the carabiner. And the secret to my success is lamb's wool, the wool from a lamb. This is an amazing blister prevention sort of system. It creates this barrier this, that, that still breathes and allows your skin not to rub against itself. Sunscreen, I have this little tiny tube. Volume matters if you bring a big tube, you're gonna have to carry a big tube. I would stuff this into this little front stuff sack. My wife and I would would buy new sunscreen and then divvy it up between our two cases. This is the all good sunscreen butter. Oh, this is zinc. There's a tinted version as well. Doesn't really matter. Just a little dab will do ya. Put it on your nose, put it on your cheeks. It's a really, really good sunscreen for your face. This thing will last you the entire Camino, this little tin. They are incredible. We also brought an open L knife for making picnics and sandwiches and opening bottles of wine. This is not that knife. It was a little bit bigger and it had a corkscrew on it, but it got taken away by train security when we left Santiago because it's a knife. Of course it did. I am a huge hiking pole fan, even with a lumbar pack you need hiking poles. They take a lot of the weight off your joints. They help you get uphill, they help you get downhill. I have a bad knee, so I've committed to using the hiking poles years ago. This is the clip lock system. It's much better than the twist down system. It's more robust. One of my poles did break, broke up top, which is unfortunate, but I replaced it with a pole that doesn't match and I'm very fine with it. Also bring an extra pair of hiking pole tips. These are from Decathlon, they're the four clay. They're red. I don't know what's in these, but we should make everything out of these because they last forever. I think this is like 800 kilometers of walking on this and it's still going strong. This is my rain cover. You'll notice that my lumbar pack is not waterproof. It's just sort of a regular canvas. It's very rugged, 
but if it was in a downpour, you're definitely gonna get water inside. I went a little bit more lo-fi with just a grocery store plastic bag. I would put all my clothing and any electronics that I didn't want to get wet inside the grocery bag, tie it up, roll it down, instant dry bag. All of my clothing and important things stayed dry. So grab a grocery store bag, you're good to go. I brought a phone because everyone brings a phone. This is the Anker IQ3 30 watt fast charger. It's really small, it's really light. Try to get something European, just easier to use. I also brought this Kindle style e-reader. This is the Supernote A6. I like to read a lot. That's what I do with my downtime on the Camino. I mentioned this so that you can see that even in a lumbar pack, you have room to bring a few extra items if they're important to you. It's actually quite heavy as well. If you can keep the essentials to a small limit, you'll have room for personal items like this. I also include this as sort of an extra hack. This is a dog treat pouch. I call it my cookie pouch. Clip it onto the outside of the bag along the waist belt. And then I would have easy grab and go for like snacks. This is my main water bottle. This is the water to go active version. I think it's 25 ounces. I use this thing every day for 54 days. Did a really good job. It includes a filter in the lid. It's quite lightweight for what it is, but still pretty robust. I don't think that you need a filtered water bottle on the Camino. The water quality in the fountains is very good, but if it's something that you're nervous about filling up with tap water or filling up at the fountains, this is a very lightweight option. It fit very well in the bag. I also just went with a regular plastic bottle on the other side. All right, let's pack it all up and see how much this thing weighs. Six pounds, 2.8 kilos. I loved hiking the Camino de Santiago with a lumbar pack. I felt really free. I felt really unburdened when I had it. And I felt like I had everything I needed. If you're interested at all in packing in a lumbar pack, go for it. I hope this list helps. You can ask any questions in the comments below. I'm more than happy to answer anything specific. If you have a lumbar pack that's different from the Sierra Designs, Throw it in there. I'd love to see what you guys come up with. Buen Camino. I hope to see you out there. I hope that we start a lumbar pack revolution. Just people with like lumbar packs and fanny packs just out there just doing it. Like, oh, I don't have anything on my shoulders. Nothing. Oh, what? No, it's just my, it's just my shoulders are free and, and breezy and there's like wind blowing on my back. That's what I dream of. I'm Sean and thanks for spending your day with me. Oh, hello. Okay, we'll see you later. Bye. Bonjour. <laughs>